All right. Perfect. All right, ladies, what's up? How's it going? I am Pastor Stella. It is Tuesday, March 7th. So excited for this message that we have going on. We're going to talk about beware of demonic spirits. Okay. We're going to talk about that. So get ready because we've been dealing, we've been dealing with a lot of, of crazy stuff going on, but I cannot wait to go into this word with you. But um, before we start, I'm going to just give this to God real quick. So let's pray. Father God, we just, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We thank you, Father God, that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, that no one comes to the Father except for you, through you, Jesus. So we thank you, Lord, that you give us the opportunity, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that um, that you give us um, your presence, Lord, on this call. We need you, Lord. We cannot do this without you. We can't do anything without you. Holy Spirit, we invite you in right now. You take over this call. You take over these words, Lord God. Take over... Um, this message, Lord Jesus, take over my words, God. I pray that you would anoint it, Lord. Let it, let it be from you and not from me. Let me decrease so that you will increase. And right now, I just come against any uh, anything, Lord God, that would try to hinder your word, that would stop your message. I just come against that right now in Jesus' name. And I ask you, Lord God, just to take over this call. Take the full platform, Jesus. We love you. We praise you. We honor you, God. You are mighty. You are wonderful, Lord God. You are sovereign, Yahweh. We love you, Jesus. And it's in your mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, he's so good. Um, always invite the Holy Spirit, wherever you're at, ladies, whatever church, wherever women's group, wherever, whatever event you go to, make sure they open up with prayer. Make sure that they invite the Holy Spirit, right? Because there's a lot of places that don't have the Holy Spirit. Right. They can say all the God words that they want. They can speak truth and all that stuff, all they want. But a lot of them don't have Holy Spirit there. So you just say, hey, we let's invite Holy Spirit in. Right. Because, you know, he's he's wonderful. He's amazing. He needs to be there. That's the whole point. So um, so this has been a crazy, crazy week. You know, like on Sunday was our first day in our new service. Thank you, Jesus. In our new building. Sorry. Thank you, Lord. It was absolutely incredible. You can feel the tangible presence of God in the place. Like it, it was just amazing. Right. Um, and then at the end of it, like, uh, something shifted, you know, not for bad, but there was something that came in to the building and, um, started to try and trying to create a distraction. Right. So, um, right after service, uh, or right after, uh, altar call, we had, yeah, right after service, we had, um, our people, uh, usher this person into the back room and there was, chaos and craziness going back there right if you've ever i don't know if you've ever done deliverance it's normal <laughs> it's a tuesday for us okay that's what deliverance is every day right so it's for us our kids are, are used to casting out demons in jesus name right like they're used to that world because that's what god said to do right healing and, and and casting out everything so that doesn't phase us um we've seen the enemy the same tactics every single time but that was happening on that side and at the same time i was in the back room with another young gal praying for her and she gave her life to Jesus. Come on after service in the side room, right? She just gave her life to Jesus right there. So look at how the enemy, you see how the enemy tried to come in and create confusion and distraction, right? And then here's someone else giving their soul, right? So we had six, six salvations on Sunday, praise God. Cause that's why we're there. That's why we're there, right? Um, there, he it's him. It's all for him, you know? So, um, but we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how you will be on the road. You will be on your journey with Jesus, right? And who, who knows that it's not easy. It's not an easy journey, right? But it's exciting. It's exciting. When you see, when you see the restoration in families, when you see salvation, that people who have, who left God, who are just completely broken and they give their life. And when you see them start transforming their lives for Jesus, like that makes everything worth it, right? All the late nights, all the phone calls all day long, like everything, the demonic warfare, the, the you know, spiritual warfare that comes along in the package, right? Um, Listen, like if, if they're, if you're not being attacked, that means that you're not doing much. Okay. I'm just going to be real. Okay. I'm going to speak truth to you because you're like, oh, I have the most amazing journey. I don't have any issues ever. Okay. Well then that means that you're comfortable and that means you're not a threat to the enemy. Okay. So don't feel bad. Don't feel just to ask God say, Lord, show me, am I comfortable? Am I stagnant? You, I better, I better move. Right. Um, because God needs warriors. He needs, he needs foot soldiers out there, right. Um, to get out there and, and just do what God, what he has called them to do. Right. So I'm going to read in acts 1340. 
So if anybody wants to type that there, thank you, Jesus, in the chat box, 1340. Okay. All right. And it says, therefore, take heed so that the things spoken of of in the prophets may not come upon you. Behold, not scoffers and marvel and perish, for I am accomplishing a work in your days, a work which you will never believe, though someone should describe it to you. Okay, so let me get it. Hold on, let me get my other book. I gotta read it. I got my stack. <laughs> Let's go into the NLT version of that, okay? Let's go into it, because sometimes it can be tricky to understand. So Acts. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Okay, 1340. Thank you for typing that. Next 1340. Here we go. Okay, it says, be careful. Do not let the prophet's words apply to you. For they said, look, you mockers, be amazed and die. For I am doing something in your own day, something you wouldn't believe even if someone told you about it. Okay, so there, God has not stopped doing what, what he's done, right? Jesus has was doing it in the Bible, in the New Testament. It's still happening today. If you have not seen it, call somebody, call like, Hey, where's the spirit led church? What's going on? I want to be there. Right. And see what God is doing. Cause he is doing miracles in this day. He is, he is, there's things that you're not going to believe that he's doing. It's going to be so, you know, mind blowing. Um, and unbelievers won't see it. They won't believe it. Right. But, um, you will. Right. So, but he says, you know, so I'm gonna talk to you about child, the Chaldeans. Okay. Chaldeans are demons. Okay. Um, they're, they're, they're thieves. Okay. So these are what, what what demons are chaldeans and that's what he's talking about and you mockers of that of, of that time right um let's go into habakkuk one five through six does anybody have bibles with them we have bibles yes perfect so um sis i'm going to give you stephanie i'm going to or steph i'm going to give you a scripture matthew 12 43 and i'll uh call on you to read that in a moment Matthew 12, 43. If anybody else has a, a Bible too, I can give you one, a scripture. Okay. So bear with me. Okay, so we're going to read it. Habakkuk 1, 5 through 6. Okay, it says, this is the message that the, that the prophet Habakkuk received in a vision, okay? So it says, how long, O Lord, must I call for help? but you do not listen. Violence is everywhere, I cry, but you do not come to save. Must I forever see these evil deeds? Why must I watch all this misery? Wherever I look, I see destruction and violence. I am surrounded by people who love to argue and fight. The law has become paralyzed and there is no justice in the courts. The wicked far outnumber the righteous so that the justice has become perverted. Does this sound familiar to you? Does this sound like, oh, Lord, that sounds like a prayer that we have in this day, right? And it says, the Lord replied, look around at the nations, look and be amazed, for I am doing something in your own day, something you wouldn't believe, even if someone told you about it, right? So the last scripture was in Acts when he was referring to this scripture in Habakkuk, okay? So he says, Lord, what, where is, like, what's happening, right? Right? So Satan will most likely um, not hit you. Okay. Like we, people say, oh, it's, it's Satan. He's de the devil is messing with me today. I can tell you it's, it's not okay. Cause the, de the devil is not omnipresent. He's not omni, uh, um, omniscient, right? He is um, not omnipotent. Okay. But his army, he has a large army. Okay. So he, yeah, his people will come after you. Right. But the devil is not coming after you. He, he can't be everywhere like Jesus can. Right. So, but let me tell you this one, the demons are not coming after the unbelievers. They already have them. Okay. <laughs> if you're like, oh, they're coming after these people. No, they're, they're not. They're, they're coming after the believers. There is a target on your back. That's why, oh, why is everything? I'm supposed, I, I believe in God and why is everything happening to me? You know, he's coming after you because you're doing something for the kingdom, right? Because there's a calling on your life, you know? So um, you want to read that scripture, sis? Matthew 12, 43. Okay, it says, 
When an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. There you go. So it's seeking, right? It comes out, right? So there, these are thieves. They're looking to come and inhabit a place, okay? When we do deliverance, right? When we're doing deliverance, um, in Jesus name, he's always the one that does it, not us. You know, um, we have to also, as soon as we cast those demons out, right. In Jesus name, we have to now get Holy spirit in there. We got to say, okay, Lord, let's start filling them up with the Holy spirit. Right. Cause if we cast them out, you know, what happens is they're going to go and they go and seek a place to find to a place to inhabit. And what they do is they'll, they'll go back to their original place. Right. And then if it's empty, they come in with, with seven more friends. It says in the Bible, they come with seven more other, you know, uh, demons stronger than they were. Right. So that's why it says you, it's important for you to be, um, it's important for you to be filled with the Holy spirit, to be filled with God's word. You know, Holy spirit is like, Lord live in me. Right. I invite you in Holy spirit. Right. So we got to know, you know, so the, so the demonic wander, right. The, the, the demonic are thieves. Okay. So, um, Satan is trying to steal, you guys know, steal, kill, and destroy. That's his, his entire plan, steal, kill, and destroy, right? So he's trying to steal your title. He's trying to steal your family. He's trying to steal your, your, your marriage, your jobs, your money, right? He's trying to steal your tithe, okay? Like he wants to steal that. He wants to steal the next generation, right? That's the same thing with uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar, right? With, with Daniel in the lion's den, right? He wanted to steal these young kids, steal them, and not let them have, you know, but... um just try to own them and say, you're going to eat what I'm, when I'm eating, you're going to do what I'm doing. You're going to serve and bow to me. And they said, we will not, we will not. Right. And that was the next generation. So praise God for that next gen. Right. And then look at our next gen. Now, you know, look what's happening right now in today's world, the revival, you got religious Pharisees who are getting angry because the revivals are breaking out. Like, is that crazy? Like, you know, you cannot, what, what are you mad at that? God's name is getting famous. That God's name is being brought out to the surface of, you know, we got to remember that anything for Jesus, we're going to go and get upset because of, um, because we don't agree religiously, right? Like it's not about religious, it's Jesus. Lord, what do you say? Okay, God help those. They're calling your name, right? But you have a lot of Pharisees who are pointing them out, right? Because the enemy wants to steal that next generation and he will use believers and unbelievers. Okay. So, um, we're going to go into this one. Demons are squatters. Okay. So we know that demons are thieves because they come to steal, kill, and destroy. Their entire plan is to come in, right? But they are squatters. They will come into your place and they will make room, right? If you, if you um, always talk about this, if you have a house and you um, go open the door, right? Somebody, someone, someone knocks at the door, you open it, you walk away from it. Okay. Or you, you go to the door and you unlock it and you walk away from it. And the demons at the door, right? What happens? They, you just gave them access, right? You're like, okay, well, just come on in, right? When you invite the devil to dinner, he brings his pajamas, okay? He plans to stay. He does not plan to leave. So any open door that you give, which is, you know, it could be music. It could be people that um, that God has told you to shut the door to you a long time ago. It could be, you know, uh, addictions. It could be lust. It could be, I mean, anything, right? Bitterness, offense, unforgiveness, all those are, are open doors for the enemy to come in. And once he comes in, he squats. He does not plan to leave, right? So we have to know our authority and we got to know that we got to, we got to evict the enemy. It's not allowed when that, when that gal came into the church on Sunday, right? She tried to come in and cause cre uh, confusion and distraction. And we evicted her right out. We gave her a chance to repent. You know, we gave her a chance to repent, get deliverance and, and, um, but she chose not to right? So um, you got to get them out. Like, demons are not welcome, right? You got to cast them out. You got to get them out. Like, what are you going to do? Keep them in there, right? <laughs> we're not going to keep them in there. And we're going to, we're going to come against that, right? Because their entire plan is to steal. They want to come in and take over. Okay. Um, demons are vicious. They are vicious. You know, um, I'm going to just use the examples of, of the people um, that we've been recently, mess, you know, uh, dealing with, you know, but it's, it's, they, they start just cut like cursing, cussing and spitting and, you know, and trying to injure and try to threaten and try to, it gets ugly, right. They become vicious, right. At first they were nice at first they were, and they were like, Oh, let's, let's hang out. Let's have coffee. Oh, that's awesome. Oh yeah. Let's read the Bible. I'll come to church every Sunday. But let me tell you sisters that the devil does that too. He will go to church with you. 
All right. He, he will, he will read the Bible with you, right? He doesn't care how much, you know, he cares about what you apply, right? It's when you start applying and living by the Bible, by the word of God, that's when he's threatened. And he's like, Whoa, this, this, this family is, is now, wow. Okay. They're, they're, they're really taking it seriously. Right. Like you got to know they are, um, they, they are cunning and they will come in there and try to do what they can. But once they get you, Right. And that's when the, the, the claws come out. Right. They are vicious. Right. Let me read a scripture. Let's go to Ezekiel 22, 7. Ezekiel 22, 7. And I'm reading in the NLT. And it says fathers and mothers are treated with contempt. Foreigners are forced to pay for protection. Orphans and widows are wronged and oppressed among you. Okay. Make sure I'm reading the right one. Yes, let me read that one again. Fathers and mothers are treated with contempt. Foreigners and, and are forced to pay for protection. Orphans and widows are wronged and oppressed among you. Okay. This is what it's all oppression. Okay. Oppression. The enemy wants to he like whether the enemy is, is on me or in me or around me, we don't want him near us, right? Well, we have to cover and protect our, our widows, our orphans, our families, our children, right? Because the wolves come creeping out at night. Okay. So if you guys know, like around three o'clock in the morning right? That was the watchman's hour, right? When, when they were in Jesus was in the Gethsemane, right? And he was try, trying to take a nap or trying to rest. And the, he said, watch the, watch the, 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 around the surroundings and his disciples couldn't like, they would fall asleep. Right. But that's the, around the three o'clock hour. Um, this is when the, the demonic are out and they're scouring and they're looking out they're They're looking for, for food. They're looking for things to, to, to eat and to feast on and to steal. That's why crazy stuff happens, right? Do you guys wake up at three, three, four? This has God done that to you? Wake you up around that time? Yeah. <laughs> I've always, always had that always woke up around that time, you know? And that's when you have like those, those you're like, okay, what's happening, right? Just it's crazy things that happen at that time, right? But they are savage wolves, right? And they're, they're trying to come after you and they're seeking, right? Um, wolves and sheep cannot coexist. Wolves and sheep cannot coexist, right? They study you up and, and down. They, 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 they size you up. They're like, where are, um, what are they eating? What are they saying? They're listening to every single word you say. They know your triggers. They know what you're upset about. They know how to make you go back to your, your, um, your past. They know how to make you go back to the things that you walked away from before, right? They know what's going to draw you in. They know what your addictions were. They know what your, um, what your, your weaknesses are because we've said them out loud, right? So the enemies study us, but do we know him? Do we know when it's the voice of God? And do we know when it's, it's the enemy? trying to come in, right? You should know immediately like, Oh no, that's not from God. Confusion. That's not from God. Bitterness. That's not from God, right? Like annoyance, irritation. You got to know what is from God and what is from the, you know, the enemy because he knows you, he knows everything about you. He studies you, right? The, um, the more comfortable that the, that the, that the, de that the enemy is in your life, the more dangerous they are, right? Listen, there's probably doors that God's been telling you that you need to close, you know, and you got to say, or why am I keeping it open? God, you know, cause you feel bad. Cause there's a spirit of guilt, spirit of shame. Well, I was, I, I lived that way too. And yeah, you know, how can I turn my back on them? But, but they're dragging you down, pulling you down. There's just people that, that God is telling you to shut the door, right? You got to shut the door, you know, or maybe it's, it's the, the enemy trying to tell you that you need to be away from everybody and that you need to isolate. He's saying, get away, get away. You know, they, they don't care about you. They don't love you. They're just going to do the same thing to you that everyone else has done, right? You can't, you can't go that way. You know, he wants you by yourself so he can go in and lie to you. That's what he wants, right? So we are the sheep, you guys. We are the sheep. Our shepherd is Jesus, right? He is our great shepherd. He is the one who takes care of us, right? Like in the church, my husband and I, we are the shepherds of our flock, right? So I had to tell our, our people, hey, we have this going on. You know, I gotta, I gotta warn you that this is going on. I can't keep it to myself and let the, the, the wolf come in there and, you know, try to get our people. I had to say, Hey, just so you guys know, church family, this is our, this is the situation, but we got your back. We got you. We're covering you. You know, we're responsible for that. You know, when I go to the, to, to, to the pearly gates, I'm going to be talking to, to Jesus. He's going to say, why didn't you warn them? Why didn't you, why didn't you protect them? You were accountable for those people. Right? So we have to know that we are the sheep. The wolf is coming. 
right? Um, we got to stay next to the shepherd. If you, you got, you can't, if you're in the sheepfold and um, you have all the sheep everywhere and the enemy's in there, he's in there with his fake sheep outfit. Okay. You guys know that sheep and wolves clothing, right? But there's a wolf underneath that sheep costume, right? Do you know how many are sitting in churches with clothes on like that with fake clothes on? And I'll tell you, people say, oh, it's the pastors that are, the, that are the fake false prophets, they're false teachers. Let me tell you, there is more in the congregation than there is on the stage. Okay. There is way more in the congregation sitting next to you in church than there are on the stage, right? It's up to your pastor to call them out. It's up to you that has the dominion that walks in dominion to call them out and say out in Jesus name. We love the person. Okay. We love the person, but it's the demons that we don't, we don't, we don't allow that. Uh, we don't allow that, you know, we don't allow them to come in and, and take over the, the, the church and, and do all those things. Right. So we have to know that while we're walking in our, in our walk with Jesus, that, that the enemy's walking along somewhere around the area, you know, so make sure that you're the closest to God, make sure that you walk right next to your shepherd. You're like, Lord, like you're that, you know, Lord, I need to be right next to you. I want to be good. Lord, you're on me. I'm, I'm here right next to you. God, I want to be with you. I want you to tell me. I want you to guide me. I want you to show me when I'm not, when I'm being lied to, when I'm being um, deceived, right? Get close to him. This is your time to press in. You know, he, the enemy's vicious. He will do everything he can to get you right. And listen, when the wolves howl, they're calling more wolves. Oh, Lord Jesus, come on. When the wolves are howling, they're calling more wolves to come near you. Who knows that like spirits are around each other? Like spirits stick around to other like spirits, right? Come on. Where there's one, somebody else will back it up. We saw that yesterday. Somebody else will back it up, right? You got to be aware. Say, I shut that down in Jesus' name. I rebuke the devourer in Jesus' name, right? I will not be succumbed to that. I will not bow, right? I will not live in fear. Get out in Jesus' name, right? But it has no authority, has no authority, right? You know, so as I was protecting our sheep yesterday, you know, I said, hey, I, I need you guys to know this is what's going on, you know, and I, and I put it in our private group, you know, and some gal that was that was in our private group actually um, came in there and said, how dare you call her out, even though she worships the Santa Muerte, okay, um, and she chose that over, <laughs> so she's doing a lot of demonic crazy stuff, I said, hey, family, this is your choice, but I want you to know. I have to let you know that this is the person that you need to be aware of. Okay. So this person, the other person came in and was like jumping on there. How dare you call out the witch? I was like, what do you mean? How dare I call out the witch? Of course I'll call out the witch. Get out in Jesus name. Are you kidding me? This is what I do. I kill demons for a living. Let's go. Let's go. What, what's, what's wrong? <laughs> Come on. We have to know that you, you don't shy down from it right? God will cover it all. God will cover it all. So we, we have to, when the wolf cries out, we need to shut it down. We need to shut it down, right? So listen, and Satan attacks even worse when you were already down. Who knows that? Who knows that when you're already hit on the ground dealing with all this stuff that Satan even throws more on you, right? That's his plan. His plan is to befriend you and his plan is to steal from you and then destroy you right? That's his plan. He will sound wonderful. Just like, um, you know, Satan was, a, was the beautiful, you know, uh, in heaven, he was a beautiful worship leader in heaven, right? And he, and he had all of it together, instruments inside his body, worshiping to God, right? And then look at what happened. They will look great, but what is underneath them? What is in them? And God will expose them. If you're willing and say, Lord, show me vision, get, show me, show me spiritually. I don't want to see through my flesh because my flesh, I want to trust everybody or I want, or maybe I don't trust anybody, right? But ask God say, Lord, show me. So, so they are number one, we said they were thieves because they come and try to steal, right? Number two is they're, they are vicious. Okay. They will do everything they can. Who knows that they will say the most ugliest things to you right? Like they will say just horrible things to you to make you feel like you're the worst person ever, or like, or you're, you're worthless. You're nothing because that's what the enemy does. It is. And that's when you got to know it's not God. God would never say this to me ever. God says that I'm worthy, that I'm chosen, that I'm called, that I'm loved, that I, that I'm on, um, that I'm on track. <laughs> that I'm his, his, his sweet daughter, right? He loves everything about you. So when the enemy tries to tell you the opposite, you got to know that's the enemy's voice. You got to know. Nope. I don't receive that at all. Nope. Right. Does it hurt when you hear it? Yes, it hurts. 
it hurts so much, right? But you got to say, God, I know that's not from you. Give me a shield of heaven right now. Wrap it around me so I don't feel it, God, right? I don't receive it. I don't receive it. I don't receive it. Reject those words, right? So number three, they are cunning. They are cunning, right? They um, they take crafty counsel, right? So I just said this already. They move in, they become your friend, and then they take over. I've had so many people in my in this ministry, right, where they're like, they're they're they they tell me they tickle my ears, everything I want to hear, and then they, and then behind the scenes they're doing other crazy stuff, right? Trying to take over. They don't want to um, be like you know be supportive and be here and be a part of of something. They want to come take it. Like, I want to take your spot, right? When it's like, take it. Jesus gave it to me, but I don't think he's going to let you take it away, right? He can give you your spot too, right? But some, but they're so, they, they want its flesh, right? They want to take over, right? So let's read Daniel 2.2. Daniel 2.2. 2. It says, he called in his magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, and astrologers, and he demanded that they tell him what he had dreamed as they stood before the king. He said, I have had a dream that deeply troubles me and and I must know what it means. So Daniel called in all of these, right? The, the astrologians, astrology, oh my gosh, am I saying that right? Astrologians, am I saying that right? Uh, um, The stars determine the future, right? And the Chaldeans are the demons, right? So they, they distract, they deceive, they determine your future. The sorcerers, right? They're spirits that can tell your future. You see me using these here, these little fingers here. Okay. So all of these things, God is not pleased. He says that all of these, these people that do these things, he will destroy every altar. He will destroy them. They will not be, they will not stand. Right. He does. He's never been about that. He's never been about astrology. Right. He's never been about your Zodiac sign. You know, Oh, they tell me, Oh, you're a Scorpio. I know exactly what that means. What do you mean? What do you mean? (laughs) Stop it. Stop it. Right. Because here's the thing. When you are given a gift, you're given a gift without repentance. So people are running with, you know, with these gifts that God gave them, but the enemy has stolen them and he wants the glory, right? If you're charging people for a word and it's a prophetic word, that is, that is what the enemy has done to steal that. Okay. Cause God gets all the glory. When I do pro- prophecy, it's not me. Okay. If God gives me a word to give to somebody, it's not me. I say, that's not me. That's Jesus. That's him. I take no credit right? Like if he's going to do healing in the name of Jesus Christ, right? I'm going to say it's who did that to you? Jesus. That's right. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. I'm not going to charge for healing. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like that's God doing it. Why would I? So, but the enemy does that you're given, you have gifts without repentance, right? And if you're like, oh my gosh, I've been doing that. Or I've been going, seeing these people. I've been doing tarot cards. You got to ask, you know, ask God to expose it and show it to you because it says it in his word. I don't speak uh, opinion. I don't speak Um, emotions. I don't speak my feelings. I don't speak my thoughts. I speak the word of God. And he says, no, he says he will destroy every altar, right? Everything. So uh, Daniel went to go seek that, right? Um, But listen, let's go back to this. So they are cunning. They will study you. They will study you, right? And and God says in Ephesians 6, 11, that we have to put on the whole armor of God, right? So that we can know the wiles of the enemy, that we can know the plans of the enemy. Like we should know the schemes and the methods and the plots and the tactics that the enemy has over you. And let me tell you, for, we've been doing this for six years, the, the women's ministry, and it's the same tactics. I already know, I'm like, okay, we're, this is, ha- is going to happen next. This is going to happen. Okay. Yep. That's, that's exactly why that's happening. Cause it's, he's no, he's nobody amazing right? He, he thinks he's the best. And he's like, I, I, I can, I can control and I can, I can tell them their future and do all these things, but he's the same um, devil, same tactics. He's lame, right? And we destroy it. doesn't matter how, how long we've been doing it. We destroy it in Jesus name. Jesus wins, right? So you got to know the, the enemy has an entire army. They are organized they're in, they, they march in ranks, you guys, in the spiritual realm, they have ranks, there's generals, right? They have these high, high priests, high, high, you know, that are in there, um, the witches, right, that are, that are in there, there's no such thing as white magic, my cousin trying to tell me, white magic, it's different type of magic, no magic is from God, no spirit, but the Holy Spirit, that's what we say here, right? No spirit, but the Holy Spirit, only Jesus, I don't need anything else, right? You know, and that, that's what we got to know, but we haven't, God has an army too, he has an army too, right? So he's calling right now in these days for his army, his remnant to rise up, 
right? There is a remnant. There is a people right now that God is calling to rise up. And the ones that rise up through adversity are the ones, right? But then you see the ones through, through, uh, through like uh, adversity, they fall. You're either going to rise or you're going to fall, right? You're you're either going to run towards, you know, keep going and then run the course and with endurance, or you're going to fall back in fear, right? We got we to come against that. When you have the shepherd on your side, when you are near the shepherd, you are covered by him, the blood of Jesus, right? All you got to say, if you're ever in fear, blood of Jesus right now in the name of, you know, in Jesus Christ, I plead the blood of Jesus over you right now. I plead the blood of Jesus over my children right now in Jesus name. I break every demonic stronghold right now in Jesus name, every spirit of confusion. I break it in Jesus name. I'm not fearful of anything because I, I, I worship my King. He says, do not fear. I don't care how big somebody is because you saw David and Goliath, right? It's so funny on Sunday, I, I started praying after worship, um, praying up, up there and God was giving me these words for the youth and David and Goliath is giving me these, you know, just this word. And then um, my husband, Pastor Kyle gets up there. I have no idea what his message is about. And he goes, wow, you just spoke my whole message on, on, the, on this uh, prayer worship time. And I was like, whoa. And he did like, it was all of the, the things I had said. And I don't, I don't read his sermons before it gets up there. Right. But come on. Come on, this is a time right now that God is calling his children, right? And listen, the ladies are rising up faster. You know, it's just because we're so submitted, submitted and surrendered, right? But don't give up. Don't give up. Keep, you know, warring for your family, warring for your family. But don't sit in though. Don't sit stagnant, sisters, because it's in the stagnant. It's in the comfortable that you're going to miss it. That we're going to miss what the, the call of God, that we're going to miss what he has for you, right? So God says that his, that the rod and the staff will comfort you, right? Your shepherd, the shepherd's rod and staff will comfort you, right? The Lord uses the rod, right? You know, it, um, the, the rod that the, the shepherd has when he's walking in the sheepfold, right? He uses it to comfort you, but he uses it to hit the wolves. Come on. Like he's going to hit those wolves, but he's going to comfort you with it. Come on. Look at the father that you have. He is wonderful, right? So let's go into, um, Daniel 725. Actually, let me go into this real quick. I'm going to share just quickly, and then we're going to go into to conversation. I'm going to tell you seven categories of demons, okay? You probably heard these words, but I want you to I'm just, yeah, write them down, and we're going to talk. We'll go into it this week or this upcoming week. But there's seven categories of demons, okay? You probably heard them. Number one is thrones. There's thrones. There's lordships. There's rulers authorities, principalities and powers, rulers of darkness, evil and unclean spirits. Okay, I'll read that again. There's thrones, lordships, rulers, authorities, principalities, rulers of darkness, evil and unclean spirits. Okay, so when you pray, you pray. All right, let's text her to see if she knows that she got logged off, which I'm pretty sure she does, but I want to text her back really quick. Darn that enemy he just doesn't want us to hear anything, right? And he tried to cut her off in there. <laughs> <laughs> we see you, we see you. Aww. 
Oh my goodness. What what did I end on? Look at the enemy. <laughs> wow. You were just I know, right? You were just going over the the principles again or I forgot what they were called. You were okay. just repeating them, so Okay. So now okay. All right. So wow, it just kicked me out of my computer completely. You guys can still hear me though? I'm good? You're good? Okay. So listen, Satan will attack you when you're weary. Did you guys hear that part? No? Okay. So when you are um when you when, when you're depressed. Recording recording progress. Progress. Let me just come out of this one. Leave. Thank you. Okay, I'm still here. All right. When you are sad, depressed, lonely, right? When you're, when you are feeling just at the worst of everything, that's when he, he has you. He's like, good. I got her. I got her there. Now she's, now she's by herself and now I can keep lying to her and now I can take over. Right. But the enemy can only steal when he gets permission. So he can only come in and try to take your, your joy, take your peace, take your, um, your, um, your, your mind right? He can only take all that when you give him permission, right? And how does he get permission? Because he comes in and starts planting his little seeds everywhere, right? And then we start picking them up. Oh, you know, they did look at me that way. Or, you know, I, I guess they don't, they don't like me. Oh, they said this to me, right? Spirit of offense, um, spirit of, of, um, of, of expectation, spirit of, um, of, of, of bitterness, right? Unforgiveness, all those things, right? That we start listening to the enemy and he's whispering, because when you're out there, he's whispering in your ear. He's like, oh, look what they did. Look what they said. See, right? And that's what he does. And that's, that gives him permission because you partnered with it. Oh, come on. When we partner with the lies of the enemy that we've just partnered with that demon and the demon's like, perfect. Now I can get you, right? He needs you weak. He needs you weary. So when you stand up to the demonic, it gets agitated. Who knows that? Who knows that when you speak the word of God, that the enemy gets so mad and gets so agitated, right? I've walked into a room and I started talking about God and some, like people would back their way outside of the building. They're like, oh, I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> you know, they back their way out. Right. And it's like, okay, Lord, you know, like, cause the, the enemy cannot sit in the presence of Jesus. So are you, do you have the presence of Jesus on you? Cause if you have him in you, he's going to come out. He's going to pour out everywhere that you go. Right. You stand on those words. Um, let me go into, okay. I'm going to end there. I'm going to end there, but we're, we're going to pray right now because no more, no more is this enemy going to have control over your life. No more. Are we going to partner with the lies of the enemy? right? It does not have a permission. We're going to break those, that permission, right? Of the principalities of darkness, of the, the rulers and the authorities of the darkness, right? We don't give it permission, right? We come against it in Jesus name. It has no power over you, right? No more, right? If you're like, man, but it's, it's been over my life over and over again, but today it's done. Today it's done, right? We don't allow it. When the pe people are going to get mad because you're calling out those spirits, why are you mad? You should be joining me. <laughs> <laughs> right? They should be joining you and doing it. I, I love it. One of our gals messaged me yesterday and she goes, Oh my gosh. She goes, I, I talk about God all day now with my sister. And, and she goes, and we do feel like we're crazy Jesus freaks. And she goes, and she goes, and she goes, I started laughing. Um, and I'm like, yeah, because you should like, we're not going to look like the world. If you look like the world, there's a problem. Okay. If you look like the, you, what are you going to look like when the, when the sky cracks open? And Jesus says, here, I'm here. I am who's ready. Let's go. Right. What are you going to look like? Cause he says in his word that you can't be in, under two masters. Right. So you can't be partnering with the lies of the enemy and partnering with the, with heaven. You got to choose one. You got to choose one. Right. Where will you stand? Where will you stand? And you have the authority, right? Okay. This is really weird doing it from my phone. Um, all right. So we're going to pray right now. Okay. If there's anything that God has been, um, warning you about if there's any red flags i want you as we pray i want you to ask him to reveal it to you reveal it to you during prayer and because um god doesn't want you to be in bondage anymore right when you are bound um in the spirit of fear spirit of unforgiveness spirit of bitterness um spirit of uh, like unbelief mm -hmm. right um any of these these things um he doesn't want you to be bound by that because you're in bondage right so he wants you to be set free because who the sun sets free is free indeed. Right. And you got to stay there. You know, many people will go through deliverance every week. 
And it's like, why do I get delivered every single week? Right. But it's because they didn't walk into minion. They did not take what God said. Like you got delivered, you got set free, but now you got to walk in it You say, I am free. And when the enemy comes and throws back things back in your life, nope, I don't receive that. I am free. You know, are you going to fall and, and have to get delivered, you know, randomly sometimes? Yeah. Yeah, of course. You know, you might have, you might have a spirit of, of offense on you and you got to go take a shower and go get, get delivered in the shower. <laughs> you know, you got to do what you got to do, right? You have to be delivered from that, you know, and it's okay. There's no shame in it. Just confess it and say, Lord, I, I, I have this, right? I, I, I've been partnering with the enemy and I got to let it go, right? So um, we're going to pray right now. So just ask God as we're praying, just to show you what, um, what's been hindering. If there's anything hindering, if there's anything you've been partnering with, okay, he's going to show it to you. Father God, we thank you, Lord. Jesus, we thank you, God. You are so mighty. You are wonderful. Mm -hmm. You are sovereign, God. You are the only way. You are the only way, Lord God. Lord, we praise you, God. We love you, Jesus. We know, God, that you are the creator, Lord God, of everything. Lord, you created the clusters and clusters of galaxies, Lord, and you created us. We thank you, Lord, that you made us in your image, not the image of the world, not the image of what the enemy wants us to look like or act like or be like, Lord, but you made us in your image and you don't make mistakes. Thank you, God, that you love us so much, that you love everything about us. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing love, God, that even though people will hurt us or betray us, turn their backs on us, leave us, you never will. You never will. We thank you, Lord, that you are so wonderful, God, that you're the love that, that fills every void that we can ever have. Thank you, Jesus, for being the example of that love. Thank you, Father, for showing us and teaching us, God, what we need to know, what we need to see. Thank you, Father, for exposing the demonic in our lives. Any, anything, Lord God, that we have partnered with, God, just show it to us right now, Lord. If there's a spirit, Lord God, that's been roaming, that's been um, squatting in our house, I pray, God, that you would expose it, Lord, so we can get rid of it. Expose it, Lord Jesus. If there's a spirit of lust, pornography, if there's a spirit of addiction that we're hiding, if there's a spirit of offense and bitterness, thank you, Jesus. If there's a spirit of abandonment or rejection, Lord God, we pray, Lord, that you would just reveal it to us. I know, Lord, that we all have childhood trauma, the majority. And I know that as we grow older, Lord God, that um, it's hard to let go of it because we bury it. But I pray, Lord, that you would expose it right now. Expose it, Lord God, so we can, um, we can come against it, Jesus, and, re and remove it. We thank you, Father, for your, your hand, Lord God, over us. We thank you, Father God, for the cleansing of heaven, Lord, running through our bodies right now, blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence right now. We love you, Jesus. You are mighty, Lord God. You are mighty. I pray for hearts on this call that I pray, God, that, um, the Lord, that there is no um, condemnation in you, Jesus. You do not condemn. But I thank you, Jesus, that you lovingly convict us so we can do better. Always, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, that you teach us, Lord, because you're our great teacher. You're our great leader, Lord. We thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for your love. Lord, I pray for anybody here, God, that, that needs to rededicate their life to you right now. Um, that they've been followed, they know you, but they've been um, running off track, that they started wandering in the pasture. Lord God, it happens as we start looking at things in the world, we can start wandering. But Lord, you said that, I'm sorry, you said, Lord, that your, um, that your arms are open for us, God, that you don't hold anything against us, God, that you don't take, take count of all our mistakes, that once we ask you to forgive us, Lord, you wash us clean. And we thank you, God, for that. So if there's anybody here on the call that wants to rededicate, you can raise your hand, you can make an emoji and we'll pray rededication. And let me tell you, when you do that, God is so happy. He's so joyful. Heaven rejoices. The angels are just singing, blasting the horns. They're so happy. You know, if you've never given your life to Jesus, this is a great time for that too, right? Because God says, you just confess with your mouth that you know that he is king, that you know that Jesus is Lord, that you know that he died for you on that cross. 
And then all you have to do is say, God, please forgive me. My heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. So that I live for you every single day of my life. If that's you, raise your hand. We'll pray. Um, Lord Jesus, we thank you, Father, for those who are watching online too. Lord, we thank you, God. Um, if there's anybody that here that wants to rededicate, we thank you, Lord, that you just take them right back in. That it doesn't matter how far they've wandered. It doesn't matter what they've picked up, Lord God, but that you invite them right back in and you love on them, God. You give them the best, the best celebration for them, God, because it's a celebration, God, when they come home, when your children come home, God. Thank you, Lord. We pray for all of those, Lord, who did that. And I pray for those who, who gave their lives to you right now, Jesus, who for the first time gave their lives to you, God. We thank you, Lord, because we can't do it without you. We cannot do this life without you, Lord. We need you, Jesus. So I thank you, Father God, for those who have repented this day. This is the day of salvation. We thank you, Lord, that they've invited you into their hearts to be their Lord and to be their Savior. Thank you, Lord, that you will be with them every single day of their life. And that they, and on this day, they are washed clean. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We praise you. It's in your mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. All right. Don't hang up yet or don't leave yet. I'm just going to stop the recording. Thank you for those who jumped on. Uh, oh, did it stop the recording already? I think it did. Okay. Did it? Do you see it recording? Where is it? Where's, oh, there I see it. Record. Stop it.